for us around us. You need to unmute. You need to unmute yourself, Sarondo. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another breath of life, my God. Um, I thank you for the pastors and all the saints that are joining us today. I ask uh, for peace in their lives, my Lord. I ask for strength for all of us, my God. And I ask that you give the pastor um, your words to utter to us tonight, my Lord. And we just all thank you and love you, my God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. We're gonna make it uh, very interactive because it's a Bible study, so we need to discuss through and share our testimonies as is around us sharing with us, you know. So we thank God for everything that He is doing. And so today we are looking at how to know true prophecies. Because uh, you know, we we know there are prophecies out there, and some of them uh you can tell outrightly they're not from God based on how they are either shared or um, even the carrier of the message of the prophecy you know, based on their backgrounds and uh, how they are known, even publicly. Well, we are not uh, supposed to make to be judges, you know, to judge and say somebody is, is more and or less born again. But you can always tell uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit if something is amiss. And our God is so faithful that he always uh, make this aware to us if we wait upon him prayerfully he's able to you know to to, to show us some of those indicators that uh, either the word is from him or not from him and at times you will hear you've heard people say the lord has said the lord has said and then uh, at, at the end of the day you find that what someone is telling the lord has said is contrary to what the word of god says and uh, we don't want to believe that God is, a, is, a, is a, you know, God doesn't, doesn't uh, honor his word. God honors his word. And that is the faith that we have, that our God is able to honor his word just as spoken. For if you read the Bible through and through, you'd find that he has always honored his word. Amen. Amen. And so our main scripture today is uh, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 from verse 18 to 22. Isaiah chapter eight, from verse 18 to 22. So if you find it, please feel free to read. We want to make this an interactive session so that we don't just have me talking, <laughs> amen. That is how it's supposed to be. It's Bible study and Bible study, it's a moment of discussion and sharing, but we have the, of course, the notes from, uh, led by our senior pastor. These notes are meant to guide us even into discussing the good word of the Lord. So if you have Isaiah chapter eight from verse 18, uh, anyone there, Ella, Javier, Ronda, Ronda? I have mine here, but I'm gonna wait for you if you have it so that you can read it. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto the wizards that peep and that mutter should not a, a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their gods and look upward. And they shall look into the earth and behold trouble and darkness 
demoness of anguish, they shall be driven to darkness. Amen. Amen. So, so this this part, this scripture has um, has a, a lot. It actually it, it it talks about different uh, times and di different seasons, not just one season or one time or one occasion. It talks about the time that we are going to. Of course, the first is that the, 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 the scripture talks about uh, you know our our generation, our seed and also about us. And then it talks about what we're going to encounter and how we're going to go through it. And this was a prophetic word from prophet Isaiah. And uh, KJV says, here, I am, here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. So it was a decree but also it was a prophetic word that we are to expect our seed, not just to be uh, of any nature, but to be of the nature that God has intended it to be, one of signs and one of wonders that God can use, that one that God can be glorified by and be glorified through. And verse 19 says, and when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and matter should not should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living, to the law and to the testimony? If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So Prophet Isaiah is telling us that if there's no light in any word spoken. And you know he's trying to actually point out the various sources of 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 of, uh, of decrees because wizards and and we and uh, and witch doctors and and all these sorcerers they also make decrees they don't just uh, you know listen to you and they do their thing if you go to uh, those people who practice the powers of darkness witchcraft and all that they will listen to you and once they are done listening to you they'll make a decree. <laughs> they will actually make a decree and tell you, this is what will happen. This is what's going to happen. But Prophet Isaiah is telling us that we will know if the word they are speaking, if it's of light, if there's light in them, then the word that they speak will be from the Lord. But if there, there's no light in them, then these are words which are from other sources. And verse 21 says, they will pass through through it, hard pressed and hungry. And it shall happen when they are hungry and that they will be enraged and curse their king and their God and look upward. Then they will look to the earth and see trouble and darkness, gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. So when this, prof this uh, what were being spoken by Isaiah, he was talking about different seasons when we are going to be in this world. And times will come when we are going through even the pandemic, we are going through difficult times, we are going through uh, storms, we are going through uh, different types of, of encounters. But he says that even through that, that's the time then when you hear of words being spoken. People will talk about what you're going through. It's because of X, Y, Z. You are going through this because, you know, you did this. Remember the story of Job. So every prophet will be out there speaking their words. But Isaiah is warning us that unless we see light in them, if we do not see any signs of light in these prophets, then they are speaking their own words. But he says that even through it all, we will look through and see trouble and darkness, gloom and anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. But even through it all, it says that God, that they, they are king and they are God and look about. So we will all look up to God to get direction and to get the confirmation of every word that is spoken because it has to be a word which is led by 
the light of God. And so every believer in Christ Jesus is encouraged to desire the gift of prophecy. This is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as we see in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. The Holy Spirit reveals past, present, and future events. I, I know at times people say, um, I'm waiting for the prophet to come and tell me about my tomorrow. But the prophecy can reveal even the past. It can reveal even today, what's happening to you today. And the prophecy also can reveal your future. And this is done through prophecy, vision, and dreams. There are three major sources of prophecy, and they are the Holy Spirit, lying spirit, which are demons. And as we know, the Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies. And then we have the human spirit. So we look at that. But, but first, let us read the book, the book of 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. And look at this gift. The Bible says that prophecy is one of the offices. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. First Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Amen. Okay. So the Bible says, as we read in the first Corinthians 12, verse 7, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one, to each one of each one for the profit of all. So there are different types of, of gifts. But as we read, if you desire to have the gift of prophecy. My, my laptop froze. Amen? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you need to desire to have the gift of prophecy because this is not given to only one. It can be given to all, but different, different gifts are given to all. For to one is given the word of wisdom. So you can be given the gift of word of wisdom through the spirit, to the another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. They have the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gift of healings by the same spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, different kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. So these are gifts of the Holy Spirit, that if you desire that the Lord is able to give this unto you. I was reading today the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh, I was just reflecting on uh, when God tells Jeremiah that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And then what came to my mind was, so it means even before the fetus is, uh, is made, before, you know, the baby becomes even uh, formed, Already God knows even before you are conceived because the Bible says before you are formed in your mother's womb. So it means before even the baby is conceived, God knows that there's Albert who's going to come out and he's going to be my servant in this area. And he says, I'd already ordained you a prophet. So this spirit, this, these gifts, we need to desire them. I know there was a conversation with, between God and Jeremiah. Jeremiah says he asked God in, in, in you know, in, in that vision, in that prayer, I'm only, I'm only a youth. And God says, say not, you're only a youth. But now it shows that if we desire and not looking at ourselves as only, you know, you can say, I'm only a woman, I'm only a man, I'm only this, I'm only that. And as we read from the introduction today, that if you desire, then God can give you uh, that gift through a prophetic word or a prophetic uh, decree. And so 
we've seen that we have three main types of spirits, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the lying spirit, and the human spirit. What do you understand by these three types of spirits? Just briefly, what, what comes to your mind when you're talking about these three types of spirits? Because it, looking at how these prophecies come and we hear these things out there every time, you know, every day we hear new things coming up, people saying this, saying that, and they say, thus says the Lord, you know, this is what God is saying. What comes to your mind if you hear about... Yes. Anyone want to contribute? The Holy Spirit, the lying, the lying spirit, and the human spirit. And they always, they all have their ways of, I mean, they all, they all have prophecies. We have prophets, prophetic uh, word and prophetic mandate from, by the Holy Spirit. But we also have those lying spirits. And we also have human spirits. Well, oh, oh. I would like to say, I would, talk, I would like to talk about the human spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and use uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse uh, 14, I believe it is. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The human spirit tends to speak a lot on human knowledge mm -hmm. and contribute everything that they appear to know, but they do not know. Uh, and with the, the, it's funny to me because I mean, we were all at one time in the human spirit and thought we knew thought we understood mm. thought we knew what we were talking about uh so we spoke foolishly until god shut our mouth when he entered uh our lives with his spirit it was like a wow you know <laughs> i didn't know nothing that i was talking about <laughs> uh and at the same time we understand now that the human spirit is deaf and blind, mm -hmm. but yet uh, our, we have leaders that are uh, running our country, you know, making laws and decisions uh, that are, you know, and, uh, 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 that God is actually angry with us, <laughs> you know, because of the human uh, knowledge and understanding that and and they know nothing about the spirit and it's actually uh, a little scary and dangerous and mm -hmm. and uh uh and and then at the same time as the word says right here it says it says uh uh for they are foolishness to him mm. you know it, it it's like you know they that's why they can laugh at the things of a christian you know mm -hmm. they laugh at it or you know, they say things like, you know, you guys are dumb or you guys don't know what you're talking about or you guys have blind faith. And <laughs> in all reality, you know, they're the ones that are blind and deaf, you know. And, and, and another scripture that comes to mind, too, where it talks about mm -hmm. that to this day that in the reading of Moses, you know, uh, there's our, there are eyes and understanding that are still deaf and blind on the readings of the scriptures, you know? Uh, so when I think of, of, of uh, the Holy Spirit 
one that is filled with the Holy Spirit and one that is coming from the knowledge of the word of the world. I mean, it's 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 really. Uh, I mean, it's a scary thing, you know, yeah, because you know, that, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead, go, go ahead. I'm done. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because they, you know, the way the, the way uh, men, you know, humans, if you use your own understanding and Proverbs 3, 5 says, you know, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Because if you lean on your own understanding, you can only think so far. And if you do not allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, to work through your mind, through your thoughts, through your understanding, you'll only share what is humanly known or common. And as you said, that the things of the spirit are not things that can be understood with a carnal mind or with a carnal or with a, with a, with flesh and blood. The things of the spirit only require God to reveal these things to you in the spirit, just like we 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 saw. We saw in, uh, in Matthew 16 and 18 about uh, Jesus telling Peter that not man, not flesh or blood has revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So the things of the spirit are revealed to you when you are connected in the spirit. And so it is, uh, that's why we're talking about these three different ways we, you know, we hear prophecies. Not necessarily we receive them, but we hear these prophecies. And you can hear someone telling you that this is going to happen, or I saw this, or this is going to happen. Um, there are a lot of false prophecies out there, a lot of them. And unless you are careful, you can easily be driven into believing in false prophets because false prophets will, they know, they, they know what you want to hear. So they'll try to be uh, ear friendly to you. You know, Paul said that in the last days, we want to hear what is soothing to us, what is good to us. So they'll, the false prophets, they know. And uh, I remember when I was very young, you know, still young and uh, then a youth. And I used to ask my mom, how comes everybody who comes here, they tell you this and this. How did they know about this? How do they know about someone being sick? How do they, they, they didn't know about this? And so I came to learn about uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, familiarity spirits and stuff like that. And with time, I was able to now distinguish, I was able to distinguish a prophecy from uh, some of the common uh, needs that pe people go through and God can either show someone or someone can just speak from what he thinks this could be an, could be the, the matter. But now here, we want to make it very clear that a human spirit will tell you things which are human, things which are only good for humans to either hear or to scare you so that you can part with something or scare you so that you can start uh, feeling you are at, uh, at someone's mercy. There are people who are professionals in doing that. And so if you are not connected in the things of the spirit, it's hard for you to be able to know that this is a human prophecy or it is a divine prophecy. Same, similarly to the spirits of uh, the lying spirits, which are the demonic spirits. Demonic spirits are not... You know, the Bible says that the devil has been the father of lies from the beginning. And uh, it's a day we, we had a conversation about, uh, you know, how Eve, you know, how the, the, the serpent lied to Eve and Eve began to eat the fruit. So the enemy comes with a fruit. It doesn't just come to you with an, an arrow and big horns and, and all that. The enemy comes to you with a fruit. And he says, hey, you need to test this fruit because God knows this is the best fruit he has. So he's uh, just jealous. If you eat this fruit, you'll know everything. You know the truth about him. So the enemy doesn't come with the, you know, he doesn't attack you. He doesn't come, he doesn't scare you. Humans can scare you, but the enemy doesn't scare you. The enemy wants to attract you so that you may go to them and, you know, you may respond to what they are saying and you look at the fruit and yes, you eat the fruit. At the end of the day, it cuts your destiny. It destroys your destiny because you're not connected. You refuse to connect. If you refuse to connect to the, you know, spiritually, to the things of God, to true worship and true and and and, and true prayer and, and true fellowship with the Lord, it's easy to allow the enemy, to give the enemy room to come and give you the fruit that leads you away from the Lord. And once you, it, the fruit leads you away from the Lord, 
you're on your own. For humans, they'll use you, you know, they'll always blackmail you and use you as, as their own servant. You know, they tell you, oh, come. That's why you've seen even on, 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 on social media and everywhere, someone uh, claiming to be a prophet and he walks on people, he, he sits on people's faces, he stands on your stomach. <laughs> now, that now brings us to the true prophecy, which is by the Holy Spirit, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It has to be one that is led by the Holy Spirit for you to know that this is the true spirit. And the scripture wants us not to accept prophecies from just anyone. Let's, let's read uh, first. Let's read 1 Corinthians 14, 39. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Because there are so many prophets out there and people have, oh, this is my prophet, this is my prophet, this is my prophet. You see one person with 10 prophets. He has a prophet for finance, a prophet for marriage, a prophet for jobs. They, are, they have different prophets. And it's total confusion. First Corinthians 14, 39. Just one, one page ahead. Well, you know, the Holy Spirit will enable you to do things which are extraordinary, which are not common to men. For example, speaking, speaking in tongues is not something that is common. And, you know, you, you, can, you, you don't need to start saying, oh, I don't think these tongues are, are, uh, are gen genuine tongues. You don't know genuine tongues. He who speaks in, the, in, in tongues, Paul says, he speaks unto the Lord. Just like if I speak my vernacular, you can't tell, you can't tell if I'm speaking the, the genuine vernacular or I'm just forming my own words because you don't understand my vernacular. So when I speak to the Lord in the spirit, it is I'm speaking to God. I'm not speaking to man. So the Holy Spirit will enable you to even speak in tongues. And first uh, Corinthians 14, that 9 says, therefore, brethren, in fact, it talks about, before that, it talks about ignorance. We should not be ignorant about the spiritual uh, thing. Let's begin from verse seven. If That's anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or, spir or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. And that nine says, therefore brethren, desire honestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. And he says, let all things be done decently and in, in order. So if someone is, is walking on your face and sitting on you and saying is prophesying, you know, I've seen very sick and sad things on, on, online. And, uh, you know, you, you, you've, it, it pricks my heart to see a congregation of thousands. You know, I don't know if they, are, they, are, they, are, um, they want to fulfill the prophet, you know, the word that they, 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 the way to... To, to distraction is wide. <laughs> so there are thousands of people sitting there and somebody is sitting on their heads and walking on their stomachs and, and boxing them. The other day I saw someone carrying, uh, you know, carrying uh, someone on his shoulder and putting him down like it was wrestling, you know, like SmackDown. And he says he's prophesying. Now, if you look at what Jesus did, he was so decent and he did things in order. And that's what Paul is saying. Let it be decent, do things decently and orderly. Do things decently and orderly. And do not forbid to speak with tongues. So you have to, that connection, you know, when you're speaking in tongues, you're connecting to the heavenly. So that connection is what will now lead you. So I'm not talking about if you want to receive that gift of, of, of speaking what God is putting in you, prophesying. But also now you'll know if somebody is speaking from the from 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 God, if you are also connected, because you can be used to speak to release a prophetic word, but if someone is speaking to you prophetically, you can only know if you are also connected. You can't just say, "Oh, I, I, you can't make any judgments unless you you are also connected." And so it can be either way: you are receiving it or you are speaking it. And Paul says, "If you speak it." Do not forbid to connect in the spiritual realm by speaking in tongues. And so you have to subject both the prophecy and the prophet to certain spiritual tests. You have to test these prophecies, but don't be 
this person, I've, you know, the problem is Christians, we take things for granted. When they say test prophecies or test men of God, we now come up with this stop, no entry. Before we even allow the word to come to us, for us to listen to it and then look at the word of God, what the word of God is saying, most people have put the stop sign on their faces and on their ears. So they don't even hear the word of God. So they don't know even how to test it. How will you be able to test a true prophecy if you're not part of you know, the, 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 the fellowship, if you're not part of a fellowship, you're not part of the family of Christ, how will you be able to test? You even hear heathens, people who haven't received Christ telling you, Oh, I know you have to test these things because there's so many fake pastors. How do you even know about a fake pastor and you don't even belong to any fellowship? You don't belong to any congregation. How do you even know that this is false prophecy? That's why it is important. Even if you know John 3.16, I want to talk about this. Even if you know John 3.16, don't make judgments. When you hear, you hear the man of God says, okay, today we're going to, to, to listen to hear what God is saying, open John 3.16. And then you sit back, ah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So you already read ahead of him because you know you read it in, in, in Sunday school. That is how we miss to connect in the spiritual when the, prof the, the prophecy is released. Already you've made your judgments, you have you've switched off, you are doing business. What mama say, buying and selling. You're already buying and selling elsewhere. But the word is being released. You already switched off, you're not there. That's how we miss our prophecies. And so how will you be able to test? Let's read... Uh, uh, John, First John 4, 1 to 3 says we shall test all the spirits. First John chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. First John is towards the end of the Bible. First Peter, you get First John. Those days when you were growing up, our Bibles had the same pages. I would just say page 438. <laughs> and, and we'd all, we'd all go there. <laughs> First John chapter 1, verse chapter, chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Baba, can I read it? Yeah. It says, Behold, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world amen 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 it's self-explanatory do you want to discuss it anyone who wants to say something about that verse and you know the next verse where you say that he who is not is greater than he that is in the world I, anyone I, I wants would like to say something mm -hmm. I, I would like to say something uh, uh that's a very powerful scripture i mean for for a one that has been born of the spirit could understand how powerful that scripture is. One that is not born, I mean, it's nothing to them. But one that confesses that Jesus Christ is the Christ, uh, he has to be born of God, or he can't even confess it. Or, you know, there's people that even say that out of just knowledge. Uh, and one that has been born of God, he could right away oh, this guy is not even born of God yet, or this person is not, they're just going off of knowledge. They, they were either raised in the church, they read something, or the pastor said, follow me in this prayer, and they learned that. Uh, however, uh, the, as the scripture says, one can't even confess from the heart, from the spirit, mm. and be honest about it if you have not been born of God. Mm. So being born again is, is, is very important. Being, being born again is very important for anyone who wants to understand the prophecy that is said upon him, or if you want to be, to, to be used of God. But you can't just be out of uh, salvation. You can't be out of the, I always say, out of the family of Christ and be able to understand the things of the spirit. It does not work. And that's why it is important to stay connected. Even for us who have, who have given our lives to Christ, 
if we detach ourselves, if we, you know, slacken in in what we, you know, in in the in the in the in the spirit in the spiritual connection or in our commitment, in uh, in you know, to prayer and fellowship and reading of the word and meditation and fasting, if we detach ourselves and become too busy for for uh, with other things, it is easy for us to miss out on being used to speak the prophets because then you're not available for God to use you or you're not available to receive what God has, has released for you. So it is, it is, it is, it is, both, it is both, both, both ways, you know, it is both ways. And that's why it is important for us to, to stay connected because the Bible says that he who is in us is greater. So he's greater in you because he is at work always. He's always at work in you. That's why he's greater. He's, he's, doing, he's doing great things. Whatever is, we see in the, in the physical, he begins to do them in the, in the spiritual. And so that's why the connection is very paramount. Sister Ella, you wanna say something with the Javier? We don't want people to be quiet so that we enjoy this lesson. What is your observation on that scripture we just read? Sister Maiwa, I see you there. But if you're working, it's okay. If you're working, it's okay, we'll allow you to to be uh, behind the, the closed screens. Yes, yeah, I can, but I'm, I'm following. Amen. God bless you. Good evening. Thank you. Mami Oluwatoyin, God bless you. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So if you have any observation, please feel free to leave, to just raise your hand. I can see and then I'll allow you to, to share. So we manage our time. So what are the steps to test? Here. Yeah, please, please go ahead, Sir Vicky. Okay, like we may you mentioned, um, how do we discern prophecy that is of God or things that are spoken by men? You know, like you you've said that those that are that have the spirit of God, you know, we are able to know things that are of God. I'm gonna read um Second Corinthians uh, chapter two. Chapter 2, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Amen. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Amen. So this, those that are in Christ, they have been born of God. They have the spirit of God in them. So they are able to discern the spirit of God in them, what is of God and what is not of God. And you say we should stay connected. That's another thing to, to, to keep our um, our transmission mm. with the Holy Spirit, to keep it on and tight, to stay connected, you know, with God every day, you know, in our Bible study, in our fellowship with God. Because like you said, when we go uh, like a little bit away, far away, we start to less discern the things of the Spirit of God to hear from God. In that way, you know, we can dri be, be drifted by by doctrine, by things, you know, that are around us. The verse um, 12, it says, now we have the Spirit, not that is the, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The Spirit of God discerns you know, so we're able to know those things. Then I'm going to read uh, verse 16. Right? It says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have the mind of Christ. We're able to discern the things that are of God freely that has given mm -hmm. unto us. So it's just um, uh, getting to know God and to know him good. Amen. 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 And in fact, you're, you're in the same spirit with, uh, with Brother Albert. He, he, he mentioned that too. So you see, you see, if you are connected, if you are in the family, you will speak the same words. Whether whether you, you know you are there or you are elsewhere, remember you 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 are not even you are not you are not joined. But uh, Albert came up with the same with the same word. So it sh it shows how connection, you know, how staying connected uh, 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 has a lot of weight on how on how the children of God are able to to tap on the same anointing. Speak the same word. You are fed in the same in the same word, and you grow in the same way. So the same thing happens to prophecies, that those words which are spoken, and uh, we are looking at steps to test 
prophecies. How do we uh, test prophecies? You need, we have steps one, two, three on how to test these prophecies. And as we read in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, that if there is no light in that word, and the light here is the word of God, if there's no light in that word, honestly, you will just tell, so what is this prophecy all about? How does it relate to the word of God? And so if any prophecy that does not glorify, you need to test it. And if it agrees with the scripture, it's okay. But if any prophecy contradicts the scripture, if it contradicts the scripture, it is full of darkness and should be avoided. Any word which contradicts the scripture will not be taken seriously because it is not of God. Every prophecy that you speak or that comes to, if you want to confirm, even if you're the one who is speaking the prophecy, for you to confirm that it is from God, it should be backed with the word of God. But if you just open your mouth and say, you know, it will happen, it will happen, it will happen, and then it doesn't uh, conform to God's word, those are just your own words. They could be your own human uh, words or your own human feelings or your own, you know, maybe you're even, uh, you know, hallucinating and you, know, you don't know. So it's good to be the spirit. If God speaks, he'll tell you, there, my word is backing this and this is my word. And you'll be able to find in the word of God. So we need to make sure that there's light in the prophecy. Any prophecy that does not glorify Jesus revolves around salvation. Uh, the not the glorified Jesus revolves around, around salvation or is contrary to what Jesus Christ taught. If whatever you are hearing or you are saying is contrary to the teachings of Jesus, that is not a godly or divine prophecy. It should not contradict any teachings of Jesus. And we, are, we have so many, you know, I, I once ha came across somebody who was telling me a number of things and then i asked him so where did all this come from he told me that god showed him i said well let's go to the word show me where this is in the word and there was nothing nothing completely that you know because god god will always want you to remain informed but not informed by false knowledge so the Bible says that my people for, uh, perish for lack of knowledge. So don't have enough, don't, don't, have, don't have a lot of knowledge which is not of God. You can have a lot of knowledge which is not godly knowledge, but it's godly knowledge which will make you not to perish. And so if, it, if it's a word of knowledge, then also that word of knowledge should be from backed with the word of God. And if it's a prophecy, all should be backed with the word of God. Let this prophecy be backed with the word of God, because if it's not backed with the word of God, or it's not, it's not in line with the teaching of Jesus Christ, then you are only giving your own stories. And some of the testimonies actually we, we hear about, someone can be sharing a testimony, and in that testimony, God is communicating something to you. Someone can share her testimony, and in that testimony, you see your life in that testimony. And God can be speaking to you without this person telling you, this is, this is what God is telling me to tell you. He or he is just sharing the testimony. But God can speak to your life, to you, by what you hear someone say. And you put yourself in that shoe, and you, you, see your, you, you, you picture yourself in that position, and you, and you see God telling you that this is what I want you to do. Follow these steps. Walk in obedience, commit more, pray because I'm going to do something. And we'll see that later in the book of Second Chronicles. But let's read Revelation 19, verse 10. Can I say something real quick, please? Yes, yes please. Yes, please, Albert. Uh, the spirit of God is so important that uh, it brings uh, confirmation with another uh, soul that has been born of God. Mm -hmm. The word of God it's it's uh uh as it says in in timothy it it says uh it says all scriptures is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine and reproof correction and instruction uh when the spirit of god comes inside of us the spirit teaches us that first of all that the word of god is true 
Second of all, is that everything points to Jesus Christ. Everything points to him. The, the, the next person that you're talking to, there has to be a unity there. Mm. Uh, and there has to be a confession of Jesus Christ. Uh, and not just a confession, but an insight, inward knowledge and experience that the spirit has. I, as, uh, let me, let me uh, clear my clarify myself even more when he asked peter uh in 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 matthew he says peter uh he said but who, he says he said to them but who do you say that i am and peter answered and said you are the christ the son of the living god and he says for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you so you know god's re is the one that's revealing to each person who Jesus Christ is and how true his word is and how everything's directed to Jesus Christ. Uh, and when it says test the spirits, I believe that's what he's talking about. Can a person, because there's a lot of people that Jesus Christ is just a man, even Christians. He's, oh, he's just a prophet or he's not God himself, you know, or, or, you know, his blood didn't really, they come, they say these things, but they don't really believe it in their heart. God has not really uh, 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 revealed this to them. Yeah, and that's and why. To, yeah, yeah, that's why in this in this scripture we're going to read in Revelations nineteen and ten. It talks about the testimony of Jesus, which we need to bear. The Bible says in Revelation nineteen and ten, and I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me. See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit Amen. of prophecy. So as just like, like, like you mentioned, so you can, you know, Peter could not have re received this knowledge about Jesus from human understanding from any other source, from any other human knowledge or demonic knowledge. He received the, the knowledge of Jesus by the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus told him, my father who is in heaven, he then was revealed this to you. And equally to us too, we need to carry the testimony of Jesus. And who, how will we have the testimony of Jesus? It's by, by the help of the Holy Spirit. How are we going to be able to, to, to understand the the, the the, you know, the, the, the divine prophecies of God. How can you even test spirits? You can't test it if you do not have the testimony of Jesus. You cannot test the, the, the spirits if you do not have the divine, uh, again, I talk about the word connection. You don't have the divine connection with the work of God, with the, with the, with the, with the happening that God is doing even amongst you in a fellowship. You can be in a fellowship or in a church, but unless you connect yourself, the prophecy will come and you will not even be part of it. Or God may want to use you to be the one relaying this prophecy, but you are not, you're not, you're not connected. Then another vessel will be used to do that. So at the end of the day, what is more important here is for us to be able to allow the testimony of Jesus to be in us. And uh, as we, 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 we look at this uh, notes further, it says that check even the vessels. Look out for these vessels. Who is prophesying? Is it a murderer? Is it an, is it an adulterer? Is it a, 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 a glutton? Is it a, somebody who prays? Who is prophesying to you? You know, I, I remember one day Pastor John told us, somebody told him, let's pray and fast for your problem. And then he forgot to ask something. Then he, he, he jumped back into the house to ask the person, how they're going to be fasting and before the person eating already eating a lot of food so is he going to be praying for you or you're only going to be out there seeking god while he told you let us go and fast for one week and he's eating monday morning now he's even eating more 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 meals a day is it a glutton is this a man who fears god how will you be able to understand to, to even um you know know that this is a true prophecy a, a true prophecy look at the vessel that is bringing the prophecy. Look at that vessel and God will reveal to you if you are in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Now, um, 
talking about a prophecy must also be publicly acknowledged so that other prophets can judge the prophecy. I was just going through 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 27. And it says, if any man speak in any unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by cause and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak, 29, speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that seated by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy, that's verse, verse 31, one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. 32, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. 33, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as, it, as in all churches of the saints. So, um, when we're talking about speaking in tongues and prophesying, you know, sometimes we, we get into confusion. Now, people speak in tongues. See, Paul is saying, if people are speaking in tongues, let there be someone who is able to interpret. Because if they are, where there are tongues, the spirit, the, the spirit grants or the spirit gives the ability to a person to interpret what is being spoken in, in the tongues for other for those people who cannot understand the tongues. And he's saying if there is no interpreter, or if these tongues that are being spoken cannot be interpreted, because this may not be um, uh, this may not be the message for the church. So this person said, let this person be quiet. If the prophet, if, if, if the prophets who are seated by cannot interpret or cannot satisfy, satisfy the prophet, the prophecy, he said, let them keep it to themselves. For the Lord, our God, is not the author of confusion. Yeah, and again, you know, that's a good scripture. Uh, just for the sake of time, you know, First Corinthians 14, verse 2 says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them because when you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking in mysteries. And Paul says they are speaking in utter mysteries by the Spirit. Now, if you read further, verse 3 says, but the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. And verse 4 says, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. The most important thing here is to understand that the word of God is not contradicting itself in any way. It is important to understand that God will allow you to speak. If you're going to speak in tongues, he will give you exact, exact knowledge of what you what, what is being spoken. Because you're not spoke, you're not speaking in you're not you know you're not in, in hallucination. You know you not lost your mind. God is speaking to you. So the, Paul says that you're edifying yourself, but speaking to God and encouraging the church. And so the thing is, if, if God wants you to speak to the church in the language they understand, you will speak in the language of man. You'll be able to communicate with to God in tongues, but also you'll be able to uh, interpret yourself because if God is, God is speaking, you are speaking, you are speaking to God. You can't, you can't speak to God when you're not, you're out of your mind. You are in the spiritual space but you know exactly what God is telling you. You hear his voice correctly. 
And some people have used that verse in a different way to, to, to mean that how comes people are just yapping, yapping, yapping here and nobody is, is telling them. And I've been also, I've seen some other, I don't mention names of churches. I've seen some of those uh, religious groups with the uniforms and stuff where somebody speaks in a language, in, in some, some Latin and somebody interprets in the vernacular. Somebody speaks in Latin, another very the vernacular. It's not necessarily that that the Bible says. You who is talking to God in the spirit, the Bible, Paul says, you are speaking in utter mysteries, but you are in mind and in spirit. That's why a man of God can stand, or a woman of God can stand, speak in tongues and speak in tongues. People may not understand what you're saying, but as you open the word of God, say, let's go to Psalms 43. You know what the word of God is saying. It might be exactly the same thing that you are speaking with God in the spirit. And so, uh, as you say, that God is not a God of confusion. That is how now we end up in an orderly way. Yeah. But, but if, my, you just, if you just question, speak, 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 and question. then you carry your Bible, you walk away. You're like, what, you, what, was, what was he talking about? <laughs> no, I had not even asked my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> my question is, um, for example, when like the someone is going on, and then we start speaking in tongues in the middle of the sermons. And so the sermon is going on. I'm speaking in tongues. Pastor Kim is speaking in tongues. Pastor Barry is speaking in tongues. Pastor Steve is preaching. But we are all satisfying ourselves that we are speaking to God. So how, uh, how, how orderly should we be? Because we, I, I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm sure and, and I'm convinced that by that time I'm speaking to God. But at the same time, God is speaking through the person who is giving the message. So how orderly should we be, even as the, the, the believers, the, the born again, who have the, the, the ability to speak in tongues whenever we, we want to speak? Yeah, it is important because that's a, that's a very good question. And anyone can also contribute. They, they, what, what I'm looking at here from my, from my uh, understanding by the help of the Holy Spirit, we do not, we have to be very careful, brethren, because God can speak through any one of us. But we need to be very careful that when the man of God is delivering a message, for example, preaching, or the woman of God is preaching, it is wrong for us to cause disorderliness and start shouting and doing things because then the church will miss the word. They'll be drawn to you. This, this, this is a very serious matter. The church will be drawn to you because you're actually distracting the message because the message is equally, is very important that people must hear what God is saying. But if the man of God is, is sharing the word and me, I come up and I, and I begin to, to, to pray in tongues and I'm shouting and you can't hear what he's saying, then that is what Paul is saying. It is disorderly. God is our, our God is a God of order. If there's a way I can go and talk to the man of God. If it, I see that, because it, God will communicate to you, but you won't just say, okay, begin to shout, you know, howl and let people hear, not, not hear the word, but hear you. That is not the right thing to do. You may not be able to control yourself, but now, now that's now when we have ministers who need to come and help you and uh, and uh, you know and so you can talk to, you can begin to talk either to the elders or to the other pastors but that's the time that now the ministers have to, to step in and because we are, the ministers are aiding the, the pastor to aid and help uh, the prophet or prophetess and god will still speak but for us to start if i walk left and right and 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 my son go their side my wife their side another member that side and the man of god is preaching then the message is is blocked and the enemy knows that when that is done there'll be no message and that's why brethren this bible study is very important that we discuss this we can discuss this in church we discuss these things that we need to allow when god is uh, even in the place of worship there must be order there must be order and in a in a good way in a good way and that is a very good question uh Father sophia has asked let us not uh do that and so i want to bring in our pastor i know time is flying no when these questions come at the end 
then uh, that's where I, it, it should be coming as we begin. <laughs> yeah, they are good questions. But I want to bring in our pastor. Uh, let's read this Second Chronicle, which is the last verse for today, 7 and 14. It's about, you know, the word of the prophets that doesn't just come. They usually there's a condition. Most times there's a condition. The people just read, if my people who have done this, this, this. But there's always a condition to the word of to the prophecy because God wants us to understand that if we connect to that condition, then He will do it because He is a is, is a covenant keeping God. Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and then I'll bring our pastor. I'll not even discuss it. If but you have if you have any question, please. This is the time. Let's ask all these questions. We have the man of God in the house, and he'll guide us accordingly. There's no, there's no silly question. Every question is important. <laughs> yes, please. I'll come again. Can I quickly say, say, uh, say something about when you talked about um, the like the prophecy, being able to accept the prophecy. I just want to read the scripture, um, Second Timothy. Uh, chapter 2 verse 16 and i like it the way the uh the message that is the translation put it said, stay clear of first talk that is only talk words are not mere words you know if they are not backed up by a godly life they accumulate as poison in the soul it's like when you look at the lives of some of these pastors that you see online you look at their life and i don't i, I don't really i keep to or don't understand why people still follow their prophecy look at their life in their life a godly life why do you have to follow it so i just i just wanted to put that that, that look at the life of the person who is giving like you said look at the person who is giving the prophecy does that person have a godly life to be able to say what god the mind of god praise the lord Hallelujah. Any other person who wants to contribute something? You see Albert? Yeah, because of time, I was going to read um, Second Thessalonians, but maybe we'll do it next time. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Yes, please. Um, we read from verse 3, where it says, and um, maybe we'll, next time, it's very self-explanatory. He said, let no one deceive you mm. by any means for that day. Very important, will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he seeks as God. So there are some of these prophets, they, they prophesy to exalt themselves. So the Bible is telling us, do not be deceived. When you see all their prophecy, the way they portray it, it's about exalting themselves, it's all about themselves. Then you know, and you know that this one is not of God. God will give us the spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus Christ. Man. Any other person with a question, or uh, I, I'll have a question when the pastor comes in. My question will, will be: can, can prophecies change? That's what I'm going to ask. Anyone else? Prophecy mm, can be changed. If God if God speaks, I, I can he change apart from the one for Hezekiah and. Uh, Okay, that okay, that was. <laughs> I have a I have a question too pertaining prophecies. Uh, I know there's a difference. I'll ask the pastor that question between foretelling and foretelling, as in in prophesying. Hmm. Okay. Pastor, be ready. <laughs> praise praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God be the glory. Uh, we thank God for his words and his prophecy. And um, like we thank God for the clarification, uh, speaking in tongues and uh, prophesying uh, a little bit different. And um, 
and I'm glad that that uh, has been clarified even by Pastor Sophie and Pastor Barry, uh, knowing fully well that uh, we cannot, uh, when we speak in tongues, we are edifying ourselves. And when we prophesy, we prophesy to edify the church. And as we do that, as we do that, um, God's name is glorified. But um, again, talking about false prophecies, we have already highlighted how we can, by the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, decide who and what is right or wrong. One, the person that is prophesying, does it reflect a godly character? Because the prophet is there. If it's Christian prophecies, standing as a messenger of the Lord and is speaking, is talking about foreseeing the future and is proclaiming a message. Is either foresees the future or is bringing a message from the Lord. Yeah. And, we must also, and we must also understand that the Bible is encompasses as uh, a book of God's principles, God's promises, and God's prophecies. So that is what uh, the Bible is for us. So the prophecies come first from the word, but in as much that God can also speak to his true prophets concerning things to come that are not uh, expressly written in the word of God. And how do you understand this, if it is true, is this prophet, does he has a big God character? In Matthew chapter 7, if you read from verse 17 or there, verse 15 to 17 or thereabouts, it talks about you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruits. Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 17. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You know, so we, we must be, I think it's in Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 17. So again, the predictions of the prophets, they did come true. They did come true. That is also very important. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the things does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. And uh, he might have spoken it presu uh, presum presumptuously. And uh, Moses spoke about that in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, I believe, chapter 18, verse 22. But one must, to answer Pastor Barry's question, again, sometimes God changes his mind in terms of prophecy. When you look at the case of, if you go to Jonah chapter three, verse 10, God changed his mind concerning the prophecy he had concerning the land of uh, Nineveh. He, he, the initial prophecy was the prophet of, of damnation, destruction. But after the people of God uh, repented of their ways, the Lord changed his mind regarding that prophecy. So it is true that God can change his mind uh, depending on what provoked the prophecy in the first instance. And uh, say, if my people that are called my name, that are called by my name will repent and change and repent of their sins. I will hear from heaven, I will change. But we must understand that before that was said, there were some things that was happening before that. If you read that scripture chapter from the beginning, because the, 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 the people of Israel, they were, they, they were, you know, in air, they were, they were not in line with the word of God, with the with his instructions. They were having other gods. They were doing all these things. But, and the prophet came. It's a very strong prophecy that there's destruction coming. 
but he said, if my people that are called by my name will repent. So sometimes God changes his mind consistent with what uh, brings about the prophecy. Praise the Lord. Amen. And again, sometimes we must also be very wary. There are some prophets that, that speaks and uh, what they say is true. But if that prophet, every prophecy must lead you to God and must not lead you to man. Every prophet must not allow you to start seeking another God. Praise the Lord. Any prophecy that now makes you to start looking at another person as a God, you must query the source of that prophecy. Um, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, let's read that. I think Deuteronomy 18, 20. Let me see if I can pick it up. If somebody is there, we can read. It says, but the prophet who presumes to speak the word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak or or who speaks in the name of the other gods, that prophet shall die. Mm -hmm. Praise, that's his, uh, uh, yeah, that's his, um, yeah, that's Deuteronomy. not actually, yeah, that's not actually the one I was looking for, but, um, yeah, maybe it will come to me. So, but, so, any prophecy that causes you to start looking at uh, another person as a God is also something that one must uh, be weary of because God is a jealous God. He does not share his glory with any man. So we must be very sensitive and uh, allow God to guide us. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and therefore correction doctrines for reproof uh, for a man for us to be thoroughly furnished unto good works so that we can be a master, use as, as in the work of the master. According to, uh, I believe, Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. So we have to be very um, sensitive one knowing where the the the, the, the pro, who is speaking the prophecy, and if the content of the prophecy consistent with the scriptures, and uh, is there spiritual benefit from the uh, from the prophecy? I believe and I found the scripture. If you okay. want me to read it, it says when they yeah. when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord. The yeah. thing that, that does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You mm. shall not be afraid of him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So that was in uh, 22, right? Deuteronomy 22. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. Nice. yeah. I believe I have trusted. Thing that that does not happen or come to pass. Go ahead. Is somebody speaking? I thought. Uh, Albert, I think about your reading. No, it was oh, Albert. I, I think it was uh, Avia. Yeah, that was Javier. I think, no, I think, I think it, it, it was it, it was your echo or something. <laughs> oh really? Okay. That was an okay. echo. That wasn't us. Oh, okay. I, thought was, okay. I, thought, I thought Albert was reading too, and then all of a sudden it just cut okay. off. <laughs> okay. That was uh, like a right. minute late. <laughs> the late recording. Yes. <laughs> so let's read that. Let's read the Trumi chapter 13, 1 to 3. Yes. Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 3. I believe that was the scripture I was looking for. It says, If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, 
and it gives you a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder comes to pass of which he spoke to you saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them and you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And we see that many times. You see people going from church to church, listening, wanting prophecies, and uh, even though they know that uh, what is behind that prophecy or the miracle, the wonders is, is fishy. And that person, they ask them to do things that they begin to take their heart away from God and start trusting in other things. Um, so we see that happening now many, in many, in many places. So we, and also even to the extent that now you turn the prophet to your God, you know, you start, uh, you see people licking their shoes, you see people, you know, doing absorb things. Um, uh, you, you, even though what they are saying is, is right, but, you know, the devil too, does those stuff that uh, is right. Remember the, the seven sons of Sceva, they were prophesying correctly, you know, but they were actually, uh, it's, it's an evil spirit that was behind it, you know, the seven sons of Sceva. And at the end of the day, they, we saw how Paul reacted to them and rebuked them. So, Go help us. Maturity in the things of the spirit is what we need more, more than ever before to decipher a true prophecy. You must have a witness in your heart. And when we mature in our spirit man, we are able to, to de design the spirit of discernment. Is this truly from God or this is coming from man or this is coming from my own spirit or it's coming from satanic, uh, satanic uh, oh, okay. manipulations? Mm -hmm. Lord bless you. Do we have uh, any questions before we round up tonight? Oh, I know we have some few questions that were pending. I, I hope maybe I've answered it in the course of the discussions. I have a, I, I think you did, but I would like to get it clarified. The prophecy of foretelling and the prophecy of foretelling. The prophecy mm -hmm. of foretelling is one that where God speaks to someone and his word is being uh, uh, spoken <laughs> and written. And, and as for foretelling is one that interprets, the prophecy of foretelling is one that interprets How the word of God interprets the word of God and shares it with others. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not getting, maybe my, I'm not getting your accent very well. It's, it seems to be foretelling and foretelling. Uh, yeah. What's the difference between the first one and the second <laughs> one? <laughs> one is only the small, in, 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 in small letters. <laughs> well, they were, they were, they want, the difference is the prophecy uh, that God speaks to someone and he no, is at no no don't don't define it for me I want you to maybe spell it out for me maybe I'm not getting you the first one the fourth the oh. first foretelling okay what's okay it, how, the, how do you spell that f-o-r-e four mm -hmm. four and then the okay. other one is yeah and then the what other is the one, second is, one is fourth Okay, fourth oh. selling. Okay, yes. fourth selling and fourth yes. selling. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I must sin sincerely say this is uh, that's English. It should be the same thing in English. Should be fourth and, and, and fourth should, should be the uh, uh, it's uh, I don't fourth selling yeah, four. and fourth four. telling. Mm. Yeah, the, in, in the in the in the uh, in the strongs, it it defines mm. it as that's when God speaks. Is it printed or? 
when God speaks to a man of God, it, like he did the, the, the earlier prophet, they wrote the word of God. Okay? Versus when God tells the man to go speak my word and to prophesy to the people, oh, okay. take, take my word to the people. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually, for me, I, I think it's, it sounds it sounds like I mean, what you're saying, what, what I what I what I'm hearing, is fourth is what is going to happen. I mean, like it's coming, it's coming, coming it's forth, coming forth. to happen. So, like forth. Hezekiah, like like Hezekiah's uh, death. Yeah. Yeah. So it was yeah. going to happen anyway, but um, now you're foretelling. I yes. know foretelling. You know, you know, in in I, I think Pastor, what 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 I'm I'm, I'm getting here. Yes. You know, prophecy and uh, foretelling, because we, we in, this, in the notes that you, you gave to us, you're talking about yes. the past, the present, and the future. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the future. I think what Brother Albert is saying here, foretelling, he's saying that's when God says it shall come to pass. And foretelling say, go and tell them this is what the Lord says. Amen. So it's it's just English, a matter of English. <laughs> so 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 with that, with what Sophie just uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. The question that I'm asking, Pastor, is what is 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 the is the word is because some some people some people say that so God is still foretelling. Okay, God is still writing His word. Okay, so my question so to you is, is God still writing his word or is the word complete? No, I don't believe, I still believe the, the, the book of the Acts of Apostles is not completed. You know, we continue to write in passions, even though it may not be binded in the Bible. Because God is still speaking through apostles today. God is still speaking through prophets today. And they are writing things down. Some of the books we are reading, these are some of the acts of the apostles. So I still believe these. That's why don't just read book Bible, read books, especially of men with honest reports and testimonies, because that is still part of the Bible. That is still part of what the word is saying. You know, he said Daniel understood by books. You know, so there are prophecies that are written and are, 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 are gathered into this Holy Word, which is the Bible. But there are, you know, people like John G. G uh, uh, John G. D. Lakes, people, great evangelists, you know, that has gone. They have written things which are still important to us and they are God's words and revelation. So it's God is still speaking. Let me conclude like that. God is still speaking. And um, you may not find it expressly written in the Bible, but he's still speaking through great, honest, and sincere men of God of today. And some have written it in their books. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is well. Brother Avia, why don't you just pray for us? If, is he still there? Yes, I think. Because yeah, he's here. Yeah, once you put in the order. Okay. Put in the order and I can't. I can't find him. Yes, we're here, Pastor. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to pray. He's on his way. Okay, I caught him. In the act. <laughs> Father God, I thank you for. Um, excuse me. All right. Father God, I thank you for this Bible study. I thank, thank you. you for the words that were conveyed today. I ask Lord that you please continue to just. Grant us the spirits of discernment, Father God, to open our eyes and open our hearts to what is being said, to pay attention to the words, to study so that we do know what is truth, what is lies, and what is of man, Father God. There are many spirits out there, Lord, and you ask us to test them. We ask, Father God, that you give us that knowledge, that you give us that 
spirit so we can see what is true and what is false. And I thank you, Lord, once again, for bringing this study. This is a truly needed study. And like Barry said earlier, Father, this is something that needs to be taught because this is something that can't be shown to us during a normal uh, sermon on the on the weekend, Father God, or at night. This is something that we really have to get into depth. And I thank you once again, Father God, for giving us guidance and direction and what passages to read and what things to look for and what things to study. In Jesus' holy and most precious name, Father God, I ask that you protect all of us, all of those in our family, Father God, and the family of covenant oh, family. And I thank you, Lord, once again for this Bible study. In Jesus' holy and most precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Be 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 before we go, I just want to, we mentioned something I just want to say quickly because I want us to understand that uh, we are addressing, if you look at um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. That's one of my favorite, if, books, favorite books and favorite verse. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody should please read it, please. Paul, the apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God, the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the what? brethren. Verse 6. You are oh, reading uh, another one. Okay. Chapter, chapter 6, verse 1. Oh, okay. I thought you said one. <laughs> he says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. That's verse one. Pray, yeah, verse one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I know we spoke about the spirit of confusion and some, speech, uh, some manifestation of that. Uh, causing distraction and things like that in the course of the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we have seen witnesses of that. But I just want to, those of us here, we are leaders and God has engraced us with uh, the spirit of uh, meekness and, uh, you know, wisdom to deal with some of these things. And I'm just um, saying, let's continue to pray because and uh, for God to guide us on how to deal with any such issues that we see in the midst of us uh, and uh, as much as possible so that we will not um, uh, sow to our flesh and uh, cause you know, others to be discouraged from the things of God that they hold there. So that is my um, appeal and uh, to also as much as possible. Uh, let's understand we need to restore and correct with meekness and uh, understanding that we will sometimes people do things that they think is they're right about it and they hold it strongly there. So if you are trying to correct that understanding, you have to do it with wisdom so that you don't get them discouraged. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. God will help us and will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks so much Thank you. for joining. Thank God you. bless you so much. God bless you. you. See you Wednesday. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Stand out with me on Sunday. It means you guys are.